This video is going to be all about making and saving, and maintaining to a degree, credits within World of Tanks. The first thing is going to be a premium account. The premium account is by far the easiest way to help maintain credits and also gain credits within this game. Now, yes, this is going to cost you money and it is 250 gold per day. It does get cheaper as you go up. Obviously, 250 times three is not 650. So it is discounted as you go up in the, the time. And for a month of premium time, it is going to be 2,500 gold, which is about eight pound. So I think that works out around about $10 or so. Now, if you're a dedicated player, it's 100% worth it to get a year of premium if you play every single day, right? That is working out about 66 gold per day. So you're saving quite a lot in the long run. However, if you don't want to do that, by, by all means, get a 30 day premium at a time. Um, it makes no difference really, you're just saving yourself a little bit of gold. However, if you're not a dedicated player and you only play for a certain day on a week, let's say you play maybe three days a week, right? And they are sporadic throughout the week, right? One day you could be on like a, a shift pattern, right? Where one day you're on for, let's say Monday and Monday, Thursday and Friday, and then you, you don't even play on the weekends. And then for another day, you could be on Saturday, Wednesday and Tuesday. What I'd recommend you do is to get 2,500 gold in game and then buy a day of premium at a time. So you buy the premium day when you need it. That way, if you don't log in the next day, it doesn't matter. You've spent your day of premium, that is enough. Now, yes, this is only gonna give you 10 days of premium, but you pick and choose when those days are. For example, those 10 days might be that you only get it on, say, once every three months you might not play the game that much, right? And then you just have it there on your account and you can activate the day of premium when you need it. And obviously spending 2,500 gold compared to 7,500 is a lot better. If you play for a good solid, maybe four days a week, like every single week, then yeah, it's 100% worth it to get the premium time for 30 days um, because you are just losing out otherwise. But if you only play for maybe one or two days a week, it's probably worth it just to buy it in days. But one thing that I will say, if you do not enjoy this game, no one is forcing you to play it, okay? It is a game. There is no point arguing in the comments saying, oh, it's a free to play game. You're meant to be, you know, doing this, doing that. If you don't understand what a free to play business model is, I'm sorry. The game is there to make you spend money. And if you do not enjoy the game, do not play the game. It is meant to be a game. Enjoy it. If you don't, leave. It's as simple as that. Next up, to make some very, very easy credits, if you do have some friends, you can create a platoon. Now, as you can see from the platoon, if we hover over this little eye icon, you'll get 15% if you have a World of Tanks premium account and you platoon with anyone. And if the other person has a World of Tanks premium account, but you do not, then you will get 10% bonus credits. So you will gain 10% as long as someone has a World of Tanks premium account. It doesn't have to be you, just platooning with someone that does have a premium account will give you 10% bonus credits. And if you have yourself a World of Tanks premium account, you will gain 15% credits. Obviously, if they both have World of Tanks premium accounts or all three of you have World of Tanks premium accounts, then you'll gain 50% for everyone. You will also gain 15% additional experience, no matter if anyone has premium or not. So platooning is a very, very easy way to gain some credits if you don't have premium, but someone else does. Or even if you do, it's just a very, very nice way of gaining credits. Now, obviously the best way is to get a premium tank. However, to get a premium tank, you usually have to spend gold. Do not do that. Go into store. And if we go all the way down to the bottom left down here, you'll go to the bond store. Now from here, you can obviously go and see all these tanks that are down here. And anything that is below tier 10 is a premium tank. So the M60, the 121B, the Fosh 155, the FV 215B, none of these are, tier, are premium tanks. These are all tier 10. If they have the tier eight next to it, or the number eight next to it, then they are premiums. So all of these are premium tanks that you can make money in. Now the main ones that I would recommend are the Patriot. You could even go with the Chrysler K, but like <laughs> it's a little bit annoying to play with because it doesn't get a very good gun, at least for standard rounds. The exact same thing goes for like the KV-5. It's a very, very fun tank. And again, the gun is not great, but it does get preferential matchmaking. So there's pros and cons to both. If you're an experienced player, then get a KV-5. If you're not so experienced, then maybe a Patriot or even a Liberté. Um, I mean, you could always pick the T-34-3. 
it's down to you. If you do want a full guide on what I recommend, then I will leave a link for my Bond store video in the description. But all of these tanks are for Bonds, so you don't need to worry about spending money in the game. You will get these over time. And if you play a lot of tier 10, then you will gain more Bonds because you can gain up to, I think, 100 Bonds per week with a tier 10. Yeah, 100, 100 weekly bonds limit. And also there are always ways of gaining bonds, whether it be for the battle pass. For example, for getting to level 34 on the free tier, um, you'll get 250 bonds. Um, as and when you're watching this video, there might not be a battle pass out, um, but just keep an eye on like the official website and it will tell you. But you can gain bonds pretty easily if just by playing the game. And eventually you'll save up enough and then you can get a tank that you want from the bond store. Now once you get your bond store tank, let's say that it's a KV-5 for example, what you want to do is make sure that you use very very little gold ammo. Take only what you need, you probably only need about 15 rounds, maybe even 10 if you uh, want to go that low, but mostly AP rounds. Now the, the problem is that a lot of people don't like firing gold because they instantly think that they're going to run out of credits as soon as they fire one because they see 4,400 per shell and they think okay that's a lot of money. It doesn't quite work like that. If you are firing quite a lot of these, you're already going to be making quite a bit of profit just by firing these at enemies and penning them. If you fire these when you need them, which is why I say you take about 10 or even 15, you will then gain money even when you're penning these. Yes, it's 4,400, but by the time that you actually pen something and you do damage to it, you are not going to be paying that full price because it's going to be reduced because you get the damage off of the tank and that is going into your credit multiplier. The way that you need to look at it is that you mainly fire these, these are your money makers, the AP rounds, and then you have HE for very very soft targets, do not bother even firing these at well armored targets um, unless you're trying to detract them or something like that, but you have these for when you meet the very very beefy targets, right? your super heavy tanks. Next up, if you want to maintain and make the most money out of your premiums, then I would recommend that you don't use food and you use an automatic fire extinguisher. However, if you're very, very good at the game, you can make a lot of money, if not even more, than you would with food, than you would with an automatic fire extinguisher. Let me explain. This is going to help you a lot and it's going to cost you 20,000 credits, but if you have a load in reserve, you don't need to worry about that, which we'll come on to in a second. This can boost your tank to be good enough to have full view range, for example, or even just train the crew up a little bit more so you get better train resistances so that your tank goes faster. You'll be amazed at what food can actually do behind the scenes in the soft stats because it can make, say, a KV-5 from being quite bad in train resistances to being quite good as long as you have it set up correctly. Because what this does is give 10% to all skills on your crew, which means that if you have off-road driving, it's going to boost the train resistances even more. It's going to boost situational awareness, it's going to boost recon, it's going to boost everything, which is why it is super nice to have this and why a lot of people use it. Even if you're free to play, you can still use this. And you could gain more credits by using food than you would by using an automatic fire extinguisher just because you're doing more damage regularly or you're spotting more people. But you're, if you're not a good player and you're new to the game, just use a fire extinguisher. So now that we've done all the setup for the tank and everything is how it should be, we're now going to talk about boosters and how you can get some nice credits from the game. Up the top right, you have the new booster view. I say new, depends when you're watching this video, I suppose. But on the left hand side, you'll have your personal boosters. The main one that we're looking at is the credit booster because this is going to give you an hour of 50% credits to your session. Just be aware this is an actual hour in real time, not just in game time. If you forget to activate these, you can press tab in game and bring up the booster view and you can activate them from there. Now on the right hand side, if you are in a clan, you will see the credit booster over here. Now what this is, is if you are in a clan and you have access to use boosters, then you can activate them in the stronghold. So as you can see here, we have 232 of these, we can activate it and that is going to give us a bonus of 30% credits to everyone in the clan for two hours. So now in this view, we have the time counting down up here and we get 30% bonus there 
And then if we were to activate on this booster, which is our personal one, we would gain 50% to the battle, meaning that we would have 80% credit boosters overall. So now if you have a premium account as well, which you're going to earn 50% credits on top of everything, you are now earning 130% more credits than you would if you just have a standard account without any bonuses. Factor in a platoon and you're gaining 145%. And then you factor in a premium tank. Now, the problem is that no one actually knows, apart from Wargaming, how much premium tanks bring in, at least from what I could do some very, very limited digging on. Apparently it's about 30% for tier 7 to 8, I'm guessing also for 9, and then 40% from tier 5 to obviously tier 6. I don't know if that's the actual thing, but if let's say it's 30%. So we are now earning 175% more credits per battle than a standard account with no bonuses at all. Now yes that might seem like a lot and yeah it is, but if you factor in that the clan booster you don't have to even bother with. You can just join a social clan like one of my clans in the description. You're then just getting a flat 30% bonus. Plus the premium account, that's then 80%. That's pretty nice. If you have boosters and that's even better and you can do that, and, or you can even platoon. I'm sure there's people in the clan right now that will want to platoon with people. It's not too bad. You don't even have to have anything running. You just have to have a clan booster running and have a premium account. And bearing in mind that all that you've done is just grind this game to get a tier 8 premium from the bond store. So really that's not a lot. Like the only thing that you've paid for is a premium account and that is not a lot of money. Now that is all the ways that you can make money. Now there is other ways such as going into the depot and selling other things that you don't want. For example when you complete your epic reward mission um, if you do have a premium account then you will get access to a reward and it'll whack it just straight in here. Um, most of the time you don't need that, you can just sell it straight away. You know, if they give you like a gun lane drive, just sell it. Right, that's an easy 300k credits. Also, if you have a very big surplus of say, fire extinguishers, sell them. If, they, if you already have some on your tanks, and you have say, 500 of them in your garage, just sell like, I don't know, 400 of them, or 450 of them. You don't need that many um, just lying around, because that 400 odd, is an easy 4.5 million. So sell any unwanted consumables and equipment and that will gain you quite a bit of money, especially if you've been playing for a very long time. The other thing is to sell unwanted shells. Um, as you can see here also, I have 17 large repair kits. I do not need them, so I'll get rid of them because it's not really worth it to use large med kits because you're constantly being stunned. So just use a small one and you'll save yourself quite a bit of money on the long run. But also, as you can see, if we scroll down, these are unused shells on different guns. So if we then sell this, some nice easy credits without really having to do anything. Because when you actually upgrade the tank, you'll still have the shells in the depot. So you can go into here and then just sell them. Don't go mad in here, right? Don't sell everything because you'll probably want to keep it. Like I still have these here and, you know, a hardening, a turbo, CVS. I'll keep these because they will go on one tank eventually. You know, if I find a slot that I think, yeah, that can go there. They'll just put them on that. I'm kind of in the fortunate position that I have been playing through all the battle passes and I have all the bounty equipment. So I don't need regular equipment as much, um, which I just keep demounting with gold and just moving through tanks, which is a pretty awful way of using your gold. But yeah, never sell bond, never sell bounty equipment, which are obviously the purple and the pink. Don't, just don't, okay? You might think, oh look, 400k credits. Yeah, I'll get that. Sell it. No, because that costs you 5,000 bonds to buy back and bonds are scarce. You know, to put it into perspective, it's 8,000 bonds to get a premium tank and that's 5,000 right there. You can also go into the modules if you do have left behind modules from old tanks and sell them. Um, especially if they, if the tank has say two guns and one is the bad gun and then you upgrade it, it'll be stuck in here unless you tick it as you upgrade it. Um, in which case then it will just be automatically sold. And also, of course, if you want to get to your shells, you can go along here. Um, the same for consumables, modules, equipment. Um, all the tabs along here are useful for you to use. Now, how about saving some credits? During discounts, which happen at least twice a year, I don't know. No one, no one has a, a set date or set plan on when these discounts happen. Only Wargaming knows. Nobody else knows. Just watch the monthly rundown, which will be put up on their YouTube channel or the World of Tanks uh, website. 
and then you can find out if there's any discounts throughout the month. Um, usually, even in that, they're then buried deep if you actually want to try and find it. So go, go dig in and see if you can find it. During discounts, what you want to get is the 50% to consumables and equipment because that means that these, what you see here, are going to be what they sell for right now. I went through and made a complete video on me setting up all my tanks and I bought them all for this price that you see here. Vents, class one, 300k credits. That is what I bought it for. That is what I could sell it for right now. I've made no gain or no loss from buying those because I can just sell them whenever I want. So always buy your equipment on discount if you can at 50% off and always try and buy your consumables on discount, especially the repair kits and some med kits because you will save yourself a lot of money in the long run. Um, not so much the small ones, but especially the large ones because that is 10,000 instead of 20,000 that you're using. Um, especially the fire extinguishers, like I said, um, you're saving yourself obviously 10,000 each and food, which is a bit annoying. So if you have a favorite tank that you use food on, then buy a lot of that uh, nation's food into your depot and then you can play the game with a discounted food price of 10,000 instead of 20,000 every game. So that is pretty much everything that you need to know about making credits and saving credits in this game. A few things that I am just going to say at the end here is when you're blind firing, try and fire regular rounds because it can end up being very expensive if you're firing premium rounds unless you know that you know, it's a very, very heavily armored tank and you know roughly where it is. If you are using a booster, then even if it says, say, one second remaining, if you get into game with that one second remaining, it will last the whole game. Okay, even if you get in and it says it's not there, just play because it will last the entire game even if there is one second on it. So maximize the booster time that you possibly can, especially for frontline, which is a really, really nice way of making credits. If you use Frontline to your full full potential, which if it's an hour booster, you can usually get three of them in. So you play for say 20 minutes, you play for another 20 minutes, or even it could be 30 minutes. If you go to that hour mark, you can get a third game in on that single booster, which is super nice. And obviously if you are playing Frontline, then do not fire any gold whatsoever and do not use food because it's just not worth it. So that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.